So, I'm a believer in free energy, and I say that on my uh, channel and on my website, and um, it's generated a bit of an interesting response. Uh, I get a few emails from it, and one particular one sticks in mind. is uh, a guy who said um, he'd watched a lot of my videos, and he thought the work was great. Thank you very much for that. But then he'd noticed that um, I was a believer in free energy, and it made him think I was a bit of a quack. And, and I thought, well, fair enough, you can believe what you like, no problem. But it kind of generated this response. Um, because what I think is when somebody says something like that, what it really betrays is that they really haven't thought the problem through. They, they've stopped at kind of grade school level, you know, the kind of thing, the law of conservation of energy, and um, they've got hold of the idea, certainly, that you can't get more out than you put in, and that's the end of the story. So anything that contravenes that is ergo quackery. Now, how do you respond to that? Does free energy actually exist? And if it exists, can we tap into it? Well, the question of free energy really is, is a question of view. Now, Patrick Kelly has a really nice example in his book, and I'm going to use it here, and he talks about a glass of water. Now, if we consider a glass of water as a system, we fill that up and we start to pour it out, then in the system we're only really considering three things, the glass, the water, and gravity. And if you ask the question, how much water can I pour out of that glass, the answer is pretty obvious. I can only pour out as much water as in that glass, actually a bit less because of the wetting of it. So that's all I can actually do. Now, if we um, increase that system a little bit, but we put the thing under a tap, and we turn the tap on so that it's continually been filled, then obviously I can pour as much water out of that glass as I'm putting in, in fact, an infinite amount. But let's say we restrict our view. And again, all we really look at is the water, the glass, and the gravity. We ignore this section of it here. Then the question is, how much water can I pour out? Leads to an impossible answer because I can pour out an infinite amount of water from that glass, given a narrow view of that system. And although it's a, a bit of a fatuous way of looking at it, it does introduce the idea that what's important when considering free energy is not whether free energy exists or not, not can you get more out than you put in, but what is the size of the system that you're actually looking at when you're considering that something may or may not be free energy? So, if we look at another um, more relevant example, take for instance a um, crystal radio set, which is essentially uh, an, an aerial goes through a coil to the earth and we put across that a capacitor and a set of headphones, then we can tune that into a radio station and we can hear the um, music coming through the headphones. So we've got here a system in which we're getting free energy. We're not putting energy, energy in there, but we're getting it to power headphones, so we're getting free energy out. Because that's quite a narrow view of the system. It's looking just at the crystal set, and we all know that the system's actually bigger than this, because what we've got on the other side of the system is the transmitter. Well, that transmitter is kicking out gigawatts of power, and we're picking up barely enough to listen to a crystal headset. So the efficiency of the system is appalling. And the system as a whole has no free energy. We're having to generate the energy here, we're picking up the energy there. But if we narrow our view of this system to just that section, then what we've got is a free energy device. So it becomes a question of view. Now, there's a lots and lots of systems where if our view is somewhat restricted, then we get free energy devices. The solar system is a fine example of that. I take a solar panel and I put it out in the sun, connect to the light bulb, I'm going to light that light. And I'm going to light that light doing nothing to it. I'm not putting any energy in there, yet I'm getting energy out. So it kind of divides into two. There's on the one hand, your view of the system as a whole. What size of system do you actually view to consider whether you're getting free energy or not? And the other hand is, what energy do you put in so that you can get energy out? Now, we're obviously getting no more energy out of the system if we take a big view of the system. There's a certain fixed amount of energy in there, and we're utilising that energy with a certain efficiency. If we take a slightly smaller view, then we're not actually putting any energy into that, and yet we're getting energy out. Now, this kind of thing happens all the time. I live in um, Kent, <coughs> on the north coast, and just by us is a wind farm. And there's a whole lot of pillars uh, sitting out at the sea with a lot of turbines sitting on, the start, on top. When the wind blows, they flip the switch, turbines turn, out comes the energy. Nobody's actually having to do anything with that. The energy has been provided by the wind. And of course, we get this kind of energy all the time. 
take a sailboat, pop up the sail, when the wind comes the boat will move. These sailors aren't moving it, the sailors are just constructing an arrangement to harness the available energy that's there, the wind. Now that energy that's there is free to them. So that's one of the things to think about when thinking about free energy. What is free energy? If energy is um, free to you because you haven't put anything in it, that's you personally, then it's free. And there are lots of systems that are free energy. Now, if the energy of a totality is looked at, then nothing is free, and it becomes a question of efficiency. How well can you use that available free energy to be converted into motive power, that you are, the kind of power that you want to convert it into? So we change our view of things, not to uh, a question of whether the energy is free or not, because there are lots of things where energy is free and that we don't have to do anything for it, but it becomes a question of efficiency and performance. So how well can we capture it? And how much do we get out of it in relation to what we put into it? Now for things like the um, aerial transmitter, then the performance is um, huge because we're not doing anything. We just solder a few bits together, stick it on the tabletop, and hey presto, it works. So this performance idea has actually been <coughs> expressed as something called the coefficiency of performance. And the coefficiency of performance is the relation of how much power you get out and to how much power you put in to make the thing work. And something like a crystal radio set, a sailboat, a solar cell, a um, water wheel, it's going to have a huge coefficient of performance because you're doing nothing to it. But the efficiency, so an average efficiency of a solar cell is around about 15-17%, uh, is pretty appalling actually. So we think about, or can think about, free energy as being a question of view. How big is the system that you want to view to where that energy is coming from that you're constructing a mechanism in order to utilize? Now, you can utilize it efficiently or inefficiently. You can have a high um, coefficient performance or lower coefficient of coefficient of performance, but that's really what you're looking at when you're looking at questions of free energy. Not is the launch free, but to what extent are you involved in the system? Now, looking at it that way, of course, then a car engine is a free energy machine. Because we don't do anything, we dig the petrol up, we process it a little bit, so there's a tiny bit of energy input that we put in there, stick it in the tank and burn it. And our cars will go, we get a lot of energy out for the amount of energy we put in. So although we have to put energy in, so it has a reduced coefficient of performance, the efficiency is quite good. Actually, the efficiency is dictated by something called the Carnot cycle and the Carnot efficiency. But the efficiency is quite good, around about 35% or so. And um, the coefficient, coefficient of performance is quite high. But we none of us think about things like um, cars, diesel engines, uh, generators, um, solar cells, all these kind of things. We don't think about them as free energy machines. But that's only because we're only used to looking at them in a certain way. We're used to have looking at the whole system or a, or a bigger view of the system than we um, normally would have. And if you change your view of the system, your perspective of what is that's actually happening, free energy becomes totally plausible. Now, if we look at what actually is going on in the system per se, that is the universe, <coughs> then the universe has a tremendous amount of uh, energy kicking around. And there's um, a new, if you like, an in inverted commas theory kicking around called dark matter, dark energy. And the idea is that we're surrounded by a sea of quantum foam, and this quantum foam is a sea of energy interacting. Now, that really ties in quite well with the way I think about things, in that um, the, the structure of matter is very little more than the interaction of quantum of energy that we perceive as matter. So these interactions create electrons and the elementary particles that are gathered together and we see as matter. So this quantum foam is absolutely all around us, and elementary particles pop in and out of existence with alarming regularity. So there'll be nothing there one minute, apparently. Suddenly a particle will pop into existence and then it will cease its existence. The question is, where did it come from? Where does it go to? What is actually happening? What's happening is that this sea of energy is interacting. Now, what we're trying to do, or what <coughs> the current thrust of free energy is trying to do, is to try and tap into this um, sea of uh, potential energy kicking around out there. Now, it's not free in the sense that you look at the universe as the system. 
but it is free in the sense that we don't have to do anything for it apart from create structures that will tap into this quantum energy kicking around. So, do I believe in free energy? Well, it's a bit of a qualified yes, because um, it is there, it is available to us. We actually use it in a rudimentary fashion now, even though we're not actually uh, aware of it and we don't actually view it that way. We're actually doing it all the time. And the more esoteric ways of um, capturing free energy, that is this quantum foam stuff I've just been burbling on about, are um, a bit more disreputable and um, a bit more quackery. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Um, but there's not a lot you can do about that. But it still doesn't mean that free energy is an impossible dream. I think free energy is totally possible. And we're actually doing it right now. We just don't think that we're doing it right now. And that really is a question of changing our view. Anyway, I hope that was interesting.